How big is Jesus? Oh, I can tell you there's none word higher than Jesus' word. There's none word which can guarantee the salvation and saving than the word of Jesus. And when, and when the word of Jesus is big in your heart and when you have thirst for Jesus, then you can say it loudly and pray that Jesus, you are wonderful, and then Jesus, you are so big. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear friends, I'd like to tell you, I have a word today, our way after life, or I should say, our way after death. Again, you would say. Yeah, you see, I can't talk just about it. And you Christians need to know all and everything because we are serving for a big God. Because God loves us. And there will be one day when that road, when we will leave this life. When we just think about it, that 100,000 souls die every day around the world. Just think about it. Although in e when one year, 100,000 Christians in one year 
during this one year, they are being chased and they, they die. They, they are being, they are being uh, murdered. Uh, I'm not a specialist in these numbers. I read uh, one prophet who said that because I don't know. But one I can tell you for sure that there will, there will be few people who will be saved. Few people will be saved. Just think about these numbers, which seem a lot, but uh, actually, just think about it. Think China, for instance. China is one of the China is one of the biggest sit, uh, countries. When when counting people's population, China China has uh, this one party dictatorship, which is ruled by the Communist Party. Just think about it. They don't have Jesus in themselves because, well, well, though maybe they have other beliefs in themselves, but uh, basically serving for Jesus is uh, that, that's not good in there. And then you can also be put in prison. And just think about it: if so many people, if they all will, and there will be one day when they will leave this world and they will die without Jesus. Also, when we take a look at India, uh, they also have a population around one billion. One billion. This is the, sec the second uh, largest country of population in the world. And when you really take a look at uh, India, they are worshipping many gods in India. And basically, and if somebody, and if somebody is preaching Jesus, they are also accepting it. Because they think, oh, just one God more, that's okay with us. And also in there, that many people in there, after life, where will they go? They will go to hell. Because Jesus wasn't their Lord. Uh, and we can also think and we can count many countries as we know also the Muslim countries and so on and so forth Arabic countries the Lord Jesus Christ is not their Lord and I told you all these numbers 100,000 100,000 people die every day if you if you look if you look uh, around these countries, those uh, numbers uh, don't seem so big. But but as I told you in the beginning, few people will be saved. You see, when a person dies, this process can't be stopped. Not even doctors, not even scientists. A person dies and you can't just stop it. You have seen that uh, maybe, well, well, that uh, the doctors stop this process of dying and yeah, all this glory goes to doctors, but you can't just stop this process. Sooner or later, this person will die and this process can't be stopped. You see, because uh, the Word of God says, the book of Job, chapter 33, 4, the Spirit of God had made me, and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. When a person is created, it is created with the Spirit of God. And when a person is born, then God gives you this breath of life, and that person is alive. And he is acting. But... And I'm also returning to this pr thing, that when a person dies, no, again, you're talking about these things today. When a person dies, the body 
the body, the body won't go to heaven. But in worst case, to hell. The body or the flesh doesn't go to heaven or to hell. When a person dies and he is living this life, you look at your, just take a look then at your body, it won't come to you. It will be buried in the graveyard or it will be burned. When, when it will be buried in the graveyard, then, then yeah, it will be eaten by okay, whom which we were spoiling you know and we're just in, in and doing all kinds of things to our body in order to look better but when you will leave this world then the worms will yes dinner lunch you know you see you see maybe you, you wouldn't like to talk about this thing but i would like to tell you one more thing it is really important for us th this inner person the most important thing is this inner person which has been put to us by God and it is the spirit and soul and I would like to remind you when we leave this world the body won't go with you no matter how have you spoiled your body or done some good things in order that it won't get older but this body will stay underground or it will be burned. Job also said in the word of God, Job chapter 7, 5, My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. You have a question maybe. Why? Why the body? Why the body has so much punishment? Why has the body such such big punishment? Well, I also ask this question to myself sometimes, and I'm giving you this question as well. Why? Why the flesh has this type of punishment? Why the worms should eat it when you leave this world? You know how it is. Just control yourself when you have prayers. Oh, I just can't, pr I just don't want to pray, I want to take a sleep. But the Spirit says, sister or brother, today we have prayers. Before the Sunday service you have prayers, you wake up and go. Oh, it's too hot outside, oh, I want to sit. It says the body, it is being said by the body. Oh, why should it, why has it such punishment? Ask this question to yourself. But Galatians 5.17 For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Because, because the flesh wants to sleep, it wants to relax. But you know, but if your spirit has been bought, it has been bought with the blood of mighty Jesus Christ, and you are spirit, and, and you have what the spirit is telling you to do, no matter what the body says, you should wake up and go. How many people today don't go to the Sunday service when they, when they have been put to the bed by the body? Or can they say, okay, today I won't go. Okay, today I don't want to go because I haven't slept for all night. The spirit doesn't say it, but the flesh says it. You see, when the body has been bought, then you want, then you want to say, and then you would say, you, flesh, stay silent. I, I would like to go to the Sunday service, no matter what, I will do it. Then you, then you understand that, that the Spirit is talking. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then God gives the Spirit and He says to your Spirit, now we are together, now we are together and we will walk together and we will be together. 
and we will pray God together when your spirit has been bought when you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior uh, you see usually when we look in the mirror what do we see? What do we see? We don't see our soul, isn't it? We just don't see it. We don't see our spirit. But we, but we see our beautiful body. We look in the mirror and we are, we are, we are smiling. Oh, how do we look? With what eyes? With, with his bodily eyes. When we want to look beautiful, and it is normal, but if we want to look beautiful, then we also have to walk together with spirit, because we have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, and we have to walk, and then we have to say, you flesh, stay silent. Hallelujah. Jesus said, John, Chapter 6, John chapter 6, 63. What did Jesus say? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. What did he say? The flesh profited nothing. Why? Why do the flesh does do nothing? The, the Spirit that quickeneth. And then he says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. It is said strongly, your spirit, if, if it, it has been bought, it, it quickeneth. And then, then you, when you have the spirit and you want to follow Jesus more and more, I will also say to you this once more. When the person leaves this life and when he dies, how do you think? When it has been, when it, he is separated from his body or his flesh, you have seen, you see that the second person, like yeah, like, it, and it's reality. It's reality. He comes out and he sees his body. And do you? How do you think at that moment? Does he think at that moment that, oh, I have so many home, so much money in my bank account? I have so many things. Who will, who will touch my estate? Then they don't think anything anymore. When at that and that time, when your, when your spirit and soul are leaving your flesh, sleeping, you will think. You will think differently, a lot differently. And then what, my dear friends, happens? Then our eyesight, our hearing everything our emotions they are they are more they are better like hundred times better uh, and when you were here when you are here on earth then then the body was 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 doing wrong things with you but then at that time you will understand anything when you will leave your body when the soul and spirit will leave why? Because you are walking into different dimension. What is this dimension? You are walking spiritually, and you see it spiritually. Why? Because if Paul was praying a lot of times. Lord, Lord. That's why Paul prayed a lot of times. Give me, give me the spirit of wisdom and the revelation. My dear Christians, we have to pray for this, no matter, no matter what. And then there won't be a question, why didn't I just know it? And then you see that when you when this happens, how many things you have done wrong. And as we know a lot of times, and then as soon as we leave this body, the soul, we are flying through this tunnel. And we have also heard a lot of testimonies when these people have, have seen these things and then have returned back. It's not a new thing for you. It's not a new thing for you. You see, usually, it is not 
among us, but in many, but in many places there are many these demonic teachings, we, and you have also heard about that, that, that there is this reincarnation that you can uh, born in some other body and we know that this is the teaching of devil we really understand that when we when we walk outside of our flesh and that's why all these things which i'm talking don't just ignore them and don't say and reply why is she talking all the time about dying we all will die each at our own time it is also said in uh, Hebrews chapter 9, 27, it is said in the Bible, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And after that the judgment. There have been also people which have been returned by God. And the God also showed really that there is hell. And that people, whole year, they can't just pull himself together, whole year. He, he remembers all these things, because those are real things. Because it, to see the hell, psychologically, you can't just bear it. I mean, and when he returns back in the world, there are cases also. And when God returns you back in order to tell about the hell, that hell is real. And it's pe people just can't uh, pull himself together. Why do people usually, when they don't see, why are they doing these wrong things? But only when they appear at that place, then his life turns around when he is in that place and make us see that and then only he understands that there is hell and hell and heaven but not only all accept this type of thing and also to return to this thing one more time our clothing of our flesh will stay here on earth you know what is the clothing of flesh but when we leave, the Word of God says we, we won't leave with our clothing or body, but we, we are being clothed for a new, okay? And it is said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 to 6. For we know that if our earthly house, you know what's the earthly house? If our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be closed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be that being closed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality, that mortality might be swallowed upon of life. Now he that had brought us for the self same thing is God, who also had given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Just think about this thing, this word of God, it speaks really strongly. When we are in flesh, we have all these sufferings. We are suffering more or less. We are, we are suffering from all these commands from the body. Because the flesh says, no, don't do it, don't do that, and don't do that. And when, when a certain time is passing by, then you think, okay, it wasn't right at that moment, it wasn't right there, because you make mistakes. And then you also are thinking, why, why didn't God talk to me? Because the flesh was commanding you. And I also would like to repeat to what Paul said, that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
we should need this type of prayer every day. Each Krishna had, was, should have this type of prayer. Job said, I, I like to read the book of Job. There are a lot of good things in the book of Job. First chapter 1, 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. Thither the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, if you are a believer, and if you have, a, if you have repented of your sins, it is really important to repent of your sins. Every day to repent of your sins. And if you have repented from your sins, when the believer will leave this world, this earthly world, you will leave this world in a in the speed of light. You will leave this world in the speed of light. Where will you be located? What the Bible says. Just stay in queue. <laughs> Maybe some of you have some other revelations about this. But I would like to tell you, if you are repented of your sins, and if you are a believer and a Christian, In the Bible it is said, Luke chapter 20, 34, 35. Luke chapter 20, and Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain the world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Why? Uh, usually Christians think, when I believe this world, and uh, if the wife has uh, been with me, and, uh, and, if, and if the wife or the husband hadn't gone with me in the heaven, then I will wait for my wife, because these, the scripture says that, though, that there won't be no marriage, or they are not being married as well. Because you don't need to wait that your wife will come and then and then the God will make you this bed of wedding. It is not said in this uh, scripture. It is because it is said also that uh, we can read in the Bible that there were these seven brothers and all these seven brothers. One one died. Yeah, the, the wife died. No, sorry, sorry. But one of the brothers died. And then, and then was also a law when one of the brothers dies, then the other brother can have this wife, can have this wife in order. In order to live together, and then uh, it, it is also said that all these seven brothers died, and then, and one of these brothers was asking Jesus, "What will happen? Who will have this wife?" And that's why Jesus said this scripture. It is also said in this Luke chapter 20, 34, 35. Th that is also said in here because they nobody will be marrying and nobody will be married it is said in this scripture that is, the word of God says like that you see Jesus Jesus when we will be when we will be in heaven he will separate us like uh, like sheep from goats we will stand in queue. And what type of queue we will be standing? Christians. Christians will be, as it is also said in uh, John chapter 4, 17. 
John chapter 1. When we'll be in this uh, judgment day, when we'll be standing in this queue, I will also tell you in the end about this. When we are Christians, we accept Jesus of our Lord and Savior, and in us dwells love. And if we have love, we have been bought from all sins, and that's why we have we have, we have, we are reliable to Jesus Christ and we won't be judged, and we won't, and we won't be judged, but we will be, but we still will be in the presence of Lord Jesus Christ and stand in front of him. Uh, the same. It, it is a, a really good example also said in uh, Luke, Luke chapter 16, um, which we really well know about the rich man and the poor one who died. Luke chapter 16, 27, 28. Yeah. The passage 27, 28, we, we know that the rich one went to hell and he saw, he saw Lazarus, who, who was a poor man, who was a poor man, and the rich one. And this, this uh, rich man didn't give anything to this uh, Lazarus, this poor guy, because uh, because he just this poor Lazarus, he just he was just smelling this food. Then he said, "I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment." As we know, as I have said it for many times, that many people have, have been preached the gospel, a lot of people have, have been asked to come, but they just they just refuse and say, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't have much time. As it is also said in 2 Corinthians 5.10. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. And there it is said that we should all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, whether it be good or bad. It is also clearly said in uh, Revelation chapter 20, the Revelation chapter 20, 12. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. I believe that the children of God, the children of God, will, will be there where the book will be opened, the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So, so standing in this queue, or standing in front of the God, the children of God, and Christians as we read about these and this Matthew chapter 10 about these ten virgins and they were all Christians all, all, but five five of these virgins had this oil but these other five didn't have all these lukewarm Christians they will they will all, all stand in front of the in front of God but those but those they are those who don't want but, but they who don't want to know God, they will instantaneously go to hell. But what will happen, a lot of discussions are going on, but the Word of God says these things. So all of us, all of us, all of us, we need to repent of our sins each time, because of our spirit and soul has to be completely out of sin. 
because Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We will be standing in front of God. Is your conscience clean and clear in every time when you will be when you will be in heaven? Are all of your sins repented? Have you repented of all your sins? It is really important for us, children of God, to come in front of God and repent of our sins. And there are a lot of people who are teaching you, these smart people who are teaching you how to live. You, you need to live like this and this, and you need to do like this and that. But when you look at their lives, you see, why aren't you living yourself? like that. You, you see, as we read, that there is the first death when the, it is the first death when the people leaves this world. And what is the second death? The second death is just terrible. When you as sinner, when, when you as a sinner are, are you, when you are being thrown in the lake of fire, as the Bible says, the first death is when the person dies on earth. The Revelation, Revelation, chapter 20, 12, it is said, no, sorry, Revelation, Revelation 21, 8, 21, 8, Revelation 21. But the fearful and, and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their park, part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the secondest. And when we still have time and when we still are not standing in front of God. I wish that we wouldn't be like one of these five, five virgins. And when, when you are standing in front of God, I, I wouldn't like to wish you like that. When God would say to those, to those lazy ones, to those, those who are afraid of a lot of things, I wouldn't like to wish you all these things, that God would say these things that I don't know you. Because there are many things that stop Christians, but the mercy is still here on earth. And no matter what, remember, even when you go to sleep and when you are praying, God, repent of all your sins. Maybe you think that you are all clear and clean. Just repent of all your sins. I have also mentioned it a lot of time, like Paul said, no, sorry, Peter. It is also said in the Acts, so that uh, and Peter said that we would repent of our sins and return from our sins. We all will die. I mean, this word seems again, why are you telling all this word? You know, usually people leave this world unprepared. We all will die. We all will die. We all, we all will leave this world in the speed of light. And that's why we all have to leave uh, live a holy life. We, ha we, we have to say for body, for the flesh, be calm. And if you want to do something and at the same time you don't want to do it, then you know who is stopping you. It's just terrible. It's just terrible to be in hell because you haven't repented of your sins. The God is the God of mercy and He still says, you still have time, you still have time. Repent of your sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God loves us. And we can be, we can thank God that the mercy of God is so big that it is here. We can be thankful for God, that God has a plan so that you wouldn't be sitting not, not only in the church but also to preach the gospel because there are many people who say that I don't need God. 
And so many people are going to hell today because the hell is real. My dear friend, my dear friend, I would like to remind you, you can't just live in yourself when, when you have accepted him and say, just, I am saved. And that's it. You have to preach the gospel. You have to preach the gospel because God will ask from you because there will be one day when God will, will give you, will show you where will you spend eternity. And, oh dear Lord, I am thankful to you, God. I thank you for this word. And I pray, I pray for your children that they will hear. And God just, just and just, just talk to these people, talk each, to each one of us, so that each of one of us would hear your voice. I am praying, I am praying, when we will be standing in front of you, God, so that, so that we wouldn't be these five virgins, which you will say no to them. Oh, God, we want to be these anointed, these five holy virgins. Hallelujah. So that we would have this oil, who are following you. My dear Father, we are praying, just prepare each one of us so that we would so that we would hear you, so that we would be filled with your words. My dear God, there will be one day when we will be standing in front of you. Oh God, be merciful, be merciful, because the mercy is here on earth. And help us to change us, help us all, that we would be dishes that you can use. Oh my dear Lord, oh my dear Lord, we are praying. We are praying that all this earthly life is short. And oh my God, just talk to each one of us where we'll be spent, where we'll be, where we'll we be, when we will be, when we will, when we will leave this world. Oh, in the Lord of Jesus Christ, just enlighten us, enlighten us, give us wisdom, give us wisdom, and enlighten our eyes. Oh God, we need you, we need, we want to hear your word, we want to hear more and more, we want more and more, so that the Spirit, your spirit will dwell in us all. Our Father, that you love us, that you love us, that you love each one of us, that your love is in us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that there will be more and more of your love in us, that we would love our brothers and sisters, and that we would preach the gospel with this anointed water. Hallelujah, we thank you, we are thankful to you, oh dear, dear God. We are, we are praising you, we are worshiping you, because your word is higher. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are praising you, and we are honoring you. And this morning, and this moment, we are coming in the presence of you. Hallelujah, each one of us. Hallelujah. We are repenting of our sins. We are repenting of our sins in front of you. Oh God, what we have done, and what are we doing still. Hallelujah. Just, just help us to get rid of all these things which don't bring blessings. Oh, oh, help us to, help us to get rid of all these things. We are praying in the name of Jesus Christ in this morning. Hallelujah. And touch each one of us. Touch, touch each one of us, oh Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that everything is being put into the light. That everything is put into the light. That all these wrong things have been put into the light. Hallelujah. So that no, nothing is, is being hidden. And we are praying in Lord Jesus, in your name. We are standing in your presence. We are praying. Help us, help us to understand your will. We are repenting. We are repenting what we have said and what we have done. We are repenting of all these things. And we repent that we have followed the wrong people. We, we repent of all these things. God, teach us to follow you. God, teach us to follow you, the one and only, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are praying that we have put our voices uh, in our families. Hallelujah. We are repenting that we have said some wrong things to our family members, to our relatives. Hallelujah. We are repenting of that. We, say, we are saying that we are sorry. We are praying that we would be like priests in our families, that we would be blessed, that the light would enlighten us. Hallelujah. We are praying in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are praying that we need you. We need you more, Lord Jesus Christ. We need you more. We want to hear that, so, that you are talking to us more. 
we are praying that you would open our spiritual eyes, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Open our spiritual eyes that we would see your plans. Hallelujah. That we wouldn't go to hell. That we wouldn't go to hell. When we will be standing in front of you. When we will be standing in front of you. When we will be standing in front of your love. And in and then we will say that you are that you are our Lord and that we won't have any sins and they have been repented of. Oh God, we are thankful to you that you are talking, that you are talking this word. That you are talking this word. That you are talking this word. What is our way after death? What is our way after death? We are going to you. We will go to you. When this lifespan will end, we each one will go to you. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, our conscience will be clean because your spirit is in us. Your spirit dwells in us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you will be waiting for us, that your angels will wait for us and meet us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Give us, each one of us, a revelation. Give us to understand that this time is really short. We are thankful to you, Lord. We are praising you and honoring you. We're putting your word higher than than each word. You are the one and only God. You are the one and only God, Jesus. And in this day, we give all to you. And we are praying, we are praying that you would help us, that you would help us to give all ourselves to you, that we, that we wouldn't desire all these worldly things. We are praying for your mercy. We are praying for your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am praying for your mercy so that your word, which has been which had been said today that it is blessed that it has that it is blessed hallelujah and that your children would take this word and day and just to think about this and there will be one day when we will meet with you oh god because we give our life completely to you in jesus name